I mean, I was, I was in, uh, playing Atlantic City with Manny Ferguson's big band. Okay. Um, and we were all, I mean, lined up waiting to hear Wes Montgomery with the Whitney Kelly Trio. Right. And they were on stage, and we were sitting there in this big, huge, empty club. And um, Paul wasn't even in town. He didn't, you know, he yeah. didn't show. So Jimmy Cobb did a couple of rim shots. I said, I mean, he was really pissed. I mean, he really, he, they were angry. I mean, they felt they were embarrassed. They were angry. They, yeah. were, they were sad. Uh -huh. And I went up there and I started playing with them. And Wes turned around and looked at Winton and they just grinned. And uh, I played and that was, you know, whatever. And then we came to New York about a month later and Ron Carter had replaced Paul. Okay, right. And he was late because he was doing a record date. Mm -hmm. So Winton came up to me and said, can you play the first set? Ron's doing a date and went over. And next day Ron Carter called me up. I said, can you play the first set again tonight? I'll pay you like $20 because I'm doing a record date and uh, for like $8 million, you know, <laughs> and whatever. And, I, and that, then they took my number and like on the hottest July day in history, I think it was 106 degrees. And I was just about to lay down on my couch and the phone rang and it was Winton Kelly. He said, we're going to the West Coast for nine weeks. Would you like to join us? I said, let me think about it. Okay, I thought about it. <laughs> yeah, baby. You know, and uh, that, was, that was heaven on earth, you know. Those, they treated me better than my parents ever wow. dreamed of treating me, and the music, I mean, unbelievable, yeah, wow. swinging. And, um, Will you tell that great story uh, about Herbie Hancock telling you to lighten up? Oh, that was like, <laughs> later, that was like, uh, I was playing with Charles Lloyd, dig this, I was playing with Charles Lloyd, with Jack and Keith. Okay. I was playing with Winton, with Jimmy and, and uh, Winton Kelly, mm -hmm. and Herbie Hancock calls me on a Saturday night to sub for whoever, I mean, Ron had left, I think. Yeah. So to play with Miles at the Village Vanguard with Tony and Herbie. So within a week, I played with three generations of <laughs> Miles Davis rhythm sections. I just realized that recently. Wow, wow. I mean, not that that puts any, you know, merit badges on my shirt, or, but I mean, that, I mean, that was an incredible opportunity just to have been on the same, sure. in the same room with those guys, you know. And uh, they didn't talk to me. It was Joe Henderson, Wayne Shorter, Herbie and Tony. And I walked in, you know, I was like, you know, the packed room full of, you know, people. And uh, I, they didn't say anything about what they were going to play. They just went up and I took the bass out. And they started to play. I have no idea what they were playing. And you jumped in the pool. I just started playing. And I was like, you know, probably playing a lot harder than Ron Carter used to do. Because he, you know, he knew what he was doing. I had no idea. So Herbie came up to me after the, like this. He said, in this band, looking over his glasses, in this band, I'll never forget it. In this band, we'd strive for lightness. Is there anything you said to me?